name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A blessed feast of all saints to you, my dear brothers and sisters. It is a great joy for me to be here with you this weekend, along with my Matushka, uh, and the gracious invitation of Father Vladimir. Uh, we have come to a very special place in the time of our church. And what I mean by that is, we come to the completion of a great cycle that we set out upon, a great journey that we set out upon with our Lord that began with Great Lent. At the beginning of Great Lent, if we could cast our minds back about three months or so, we were asked to recall the state that we were in. We were as Adam and Eve all over again, finding ourselves naked, finding ourselves deprived of the grace of God, and being called in the light of Christ the Savior to walk the road towards purification and to walk the road towards transformation. It was a difficult road. It always is as we take the long steps towards Golgotha, towards the cross, the crucifixion, but at the end of crucifixion, there is resurrection, there is new life, there is the trampling down of death through our Lord's death and resurrection. We journeyed with the apostles for the following 40 days, learning what a life after death has been conquered actually looks like. We often forget this maybe in our day-to-day -day life. But this is what we were celebrating for those 40 days when we kept saying, Christ is risen, Christos was crazy. This was what we were celebrating. And we came to the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, where the God-man with his full humanity and full divinity opened up the very heavens and sat down at the right hand of the Father, showing to us that it was possible for human beings to enter once again into that glory that we had lost right from the beginning with our first parents. And then our Lord said, wait, just wait, because I'm going to send you something greater. I'm going to pour out on you the fruit of all that I have done for you. The fruit of all that I have made possible for you. Wait and pray. And that's what we celebrated last Sunday on the Holy Pentecost with the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles, transforming these illiterate fishermen, these people who knew very, very little who couldn't even understand the sayings of our Lord Jesus Christ when he was teaching them for three years. And yet after that, after the descent of the Holy Spirit, they went out and they conquered the entire universe. They conquered the whole world, every nation. They stood up before kings and before rulers, before the wise people of their day. And they preached with boldness this life of transformation in the Holy Spirit. So this is where we've come so far. So what are we doing this Sunday? What is this Sunday? This Sunday is the recognition of what all of this journey has been about. What all of this transformation has been about. Because today we commemorate the reality of human salvation. The reality of human transformation, purification, that we can live clean lives, that we can have true communion and union with God. And why is this Sunday the declaration of that? Because we see these people all over our walls. That is who the saints are. The saints were people just like you and just like me who decided 
to make the choice to respond to the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, to respond to this great saving message, to receive the Holy Spirit, and then, more importantly, to do something with it. That is what the saints witnessed to us. They did something with the Holy Spirit that was poured out upon them. We have all received the Holy Spirit, my dear brothers and sisters. We received it in our holy baptism and in our holy chrismation. We received the grace of God in many different ways, particularly through the sacred mysteries of our Lord's body and blood, through holy confession. These are all means of grace that God hands to us the saints witness to us that there is something that we need to do in response. There's something we need to do with that grace that God so freely and abundantly pours out upon us. Oftentimes, people will say, or you may be thinking right now, Father Matthew, come on. These are the saints of the church we're talking about. These people were superhuman. As I, I prepared another homily for you, but I decided to leave them alone. And in this, I had a quote from this great St. Gregory Palamas, who we will speak about. And he talks about the superhuman struggles of the martyrs. And this is how we feel sometimes. We look around at these saints and we say, this isn't me. I'm not like that. But I'm here to tell you today that God does not have some kind of magic wand that he waves in the air and says, Boom! You're a saint. Zap! You're a saint. It doesn't work that way. We are all called to follow the same road. And that road, if we walk it faithfully, if we respond to the grace of God, is the road to becoming a saint. Which is why we are all called to become saints. We may not all be running out to have our icons painted. We ought not to be but that we are all called to live a life like the saints, in imitation to the saints. What were these people like? They were people filled with humility. They were people filled with patience. They were people who pushed themselves when things were difficult, when they would rather relax, or when they would rather take it easy, who took that extra step, either to walk towards God, or to walk towards their neighbor. All of us are capable of doing this. And the wonderful news is, as the great 6th century Saint Abba Dorotheus tells us, the road to holiness and the road that leads to the other place all begin with just one small step. God does not expect you to be a saint tomorrow. He does not expect you to be perfect right away. He understands this is a process. He understands that there are faults. That is why he's built repentance into our lives. That is why he's given us the lives of the saints, which are filled both with the ups and with the downs. They were real people, just like you and just like me, as I've said. On this great feast, this culmination of what we have celebrated in the church, we are also supposed to take this, like the apostles, this faith now, and make this choice to imitate the saints, to imitate first their lives, but in particular to imitate their patience and their struggle. And they're not quitting, just getting back up. That's what God wants most from us. That's the road of the saint. And to take that now, in this next period of the church, but in every year, to take this now out into the world, like the apostles. Go and show the people around you the Christian faith. By not saying a word about orthodoxy necessarily, but actually becoming transformed people, living clean lives. That's where it begins. Beginning to purify ourselves beginning to respond to the grace of God, to go out from here and say, yes, God, I want to walk this path. I know it's difficult. Help me. 
with the Spirit, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit that you've poured out on all of us. We can't do it alone. But God isn't asking us to. That's why we're here. To receive the power to go forth as all of these holy saints and to bring the light of purification and of transformation out into this world. We have a very practical opportunity and I'll leave you with this. Starting tomorrow, because what does tomorrow mark? It marks the beginning of another fast period. The Apostles' Fast. This is how we prepare in our Christian life. This is how we follow the road of struggle. We do the real, practical, needy, gritty. We start praying a little bit more. We start controlling what we eat as a means to controlling what we do. Right? And that's why we come to this culmination, the celebration. We believe that Christ has risen, that this is possible, and this transformation is real. Now go do something with it. The church is asking you, is pleading with you to go do something with it during this fast period and during the rest of the year. May we all have the blessing of these glorious saints, this glorious cloud of witness that surrounds us.